I always thought this was such a great town for artists because there's so much beauty here, right? I mean, you could choose the waters, the birds, the landscape. There's so many options. I love it. I got to tell you, um, I flew in to San Diego after I was on vacation. Yeah. And flying over the airport, <laughs> you see so much artwork on That's the buildings. That's awesome. Yeah. I absolutely. And you love and I are going to be meeting with a muralist today for a future story. So we're yes. looking forward to bringing that yes, to you as well. Yes, for that. Good morning to you. Hey, it's Friday. <laughs> it sure is. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's always hard to fly away from San Diego. I always look at how beautiful our city is and don't want to leave it. I'm like, why am I going anywhere? Just stay here. It's beautiful. And look at our skies this morning. This is artwork by Mother Nature herself. And we are seeing the marine layer for most of the county, but our cameras that are on the top of the mountains showing those mid-level clouds. It's really cool when you see these kind of patterns in our skies. It might make for a really gorgeous sunrise. As we know, a lot of times mid-upper level clouds kind of disperse the colors. So I'll be watching that very closely for you. You know I will. Uh, morning marine layer in effect this morning, and then it will will be cooler today just by a degree or two mostly sunny in the 70s before the heat builds next week a quick check of traffic here and just notice uh, some slowing that's going on so I do want to push into this area right here on the 163 on the southbound side through Hillcrest area if you're headed towards places like downtown 11 miles an hour so it is very slow I'm going to keep an eye on CHP and see if there's an accident that led to that slowdown but for now a heads up you may want to go a different direction and then this crash just popping up here on the five northbound right at Industrial Boulevard. You don't see much slowing yet, but we know this is a busy commute route for a lot of folks coming in from uh, Chula Vista up north. And then overall, right at the border, it does look pretty smooth. Our wait times, at least if you are headed towards Mexico or coming into the U.S. from Mexico, once you're in, it does look to be pretty smooth sailing. No major incidents or slowdowns there. And I'll send it back to you. Netta, thank you. This morning, COVID booster shots are in the spotlight. Today, a key FDA panel could vote on whether to recommend an additional shot. They are reviewing data from Pfizer's vaccine, and News Aid's Chris Grow is live outside the Pfizer campus in La Jolla with what we can expect here today, Chris. Good morning, and that review is underway. It's something that has been hinted for quite some time right now, and the Biden administration says that it will be something that is likely available soon. We'd be able to get the booster shots in any one of approximately 80,000 vaccination locations nationwide. It will be easy. And according to the FDA, this is something that is starting to maybe become a necessity due to the fact that data is showing that vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, loses some effectiveness after six months, but improves to 95% effectiveness after a third dose. Right now, there is a split on what to do in the medical community still, though. With so many people unvaccinated, some believe the more important thing to do at this point is to focus on getting those who are unvaccinated inoculated. That's because some studies show that the current COVID vaccine's potency against severe disease, even after six months, is still enough. Right now, 65% or so of Americans are fully vaccinated in the country. Meanwhile, that number is 77, 70, excuse me, 77% here in San Diego, approaching 78%, which is very good. The country, meanwhile, again, still behind infectious disease, infectious disease doctor at UCSF, Monica Gandhi, says the message should be in throughout all of this, though, that vaccinations work. It does make me worry that if we talk too much about boosters, that it also may make the unvaccinated who are on the fence think maybe these don't work very well. You have to keep on giving them. And that advisory panel is meeting right now. There's even a doctor from Rady Children's that sits on it. And again, we'll be following their updates to see exactly what does come out of this. But if you have any questions or concerns about the vaccine, just go to our website, cbs8.com, and click on that help button. Eric and Stella. Chris, thank you. New this morning, Del Mar is the latest local city to consider vaccine mandates for its employees. Del Mar City Council will discuss the possible requirements for city workers on Monday. This comes after Imperial Beach discussed a similar mandate earlier this week, but no decision was made there. Meantime, San Diego Unified wants your input on a possible vaccine mandate for staff and eligible students. The district will hold a public discussion at the next regularly scheduled meeting. That's on Tuesday, September 28th. Just one week ago, San Diego Unified leaders told News 8 they didn't feel a mandate was necessary, pointing out good ventilation, mask wearing, and routine testing. Meanwhile, Los Angeles Unified passed a mandate requiring kids 12 and older to be vaccinated to go to school in person.
And today there is a hearing for the man who opened fire inside the Habata of Poway in 2019 where he's set to change his plea. He's expected to plead guilty to federal charges. He already pleaded guilty to state charges, so this is for federal. 60-year-old Lori Gilbert Kay was killed in the shooting. Three other people were also hurt. Through the plea deals, he will not face the death penalty in both state and federal cases. He will be sentenced later this month in the state's case facing life in prison without the possibility of parole. The Navy is now using deep sea sonar scans to find the wreckage of a helicopter that crashed off of our coast. According to the Union Tribune, this deep sea search didn't begin right away because the Navy had to bring in special equipment from around the country. Five crew members died in the crash back on August 31st. Well, this is a little concerning here. Violent crime in San Diego County is up by 14% compared to last year. That's according to a new Sandag report. Property crimes rose 10% in the first six months of 2021 compared to last year. Data also shows 50% of burglaries involved force entry. That is a 2% increase from 2020 and 10% increase from 2019. You can read the entire report at CBS8.com. And this report comes as police are looking for the vandals who hit a family business in National City. The owner of Diva's Boutique in National City says someone shot out some of their front windows here on Monday night. Something similar happened to them last year. The owner's daughter tells us they've been struggling financially during the pandemic, and this has just made things worse. Well, it's been very slow for us and it's very hard for us to be keeping up with the rent and all the utility bills and paying for the employees and having broken windows so often is something that we can't be affording all the time. Oh, it's already been so tough for these businesses. Uh, we do have a link to a GoFundMe account at CBS8.com. If you want to help, just click on the help button. Also in National City, police say at least five businesses were hit in a series of break-ins. California's taco shop on Highlands Avenue has surveillance video of a break-in. And you can see three people that are in this video here using a sledgehammer on a glass door. There they are right there. They did the same thing at the ice cream shop next door and three businesses north on Highland. You're asked to call police if you have any details or information. And this morning, we have some important news for train riders. Amtrak and Metrolink Rail Service from Orange County to Oceanside is suspended for emergency repairs. Now, the reason? There's an unstable cliff that shifted the tracks in San Clemente that was caused by beach erosion. The shutdown will last about two weeks. They hope to have repairs done and routes reopen by October 4th. Well, we made it to Friday, and boy, it is beautiful outside. We got to spend uh, some time outdoors yesterday, yeah. night, and at night, I actually needed a jacket. A jacket. Yes. See, I mean, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> definitely, like, a different. You have to pull out some of the fall clothes. I was almost about to wear my boots. I was like, hmm, it could be boot weather. Yeah. <laughs> Officially, fall starts next week, and oddly enough, things heat up as we start fall. So for the next few days from now until the middle of next week, we are going to be like this in the 70s for our our afternoons, the marine layer will burn off. I know it, you know, you wake up to these gray skies and it's just even harder to get out of bed, especially when it's kind of chilly. It was very hard for me this morning. Here's our view from San Miguel. This might get you going. Just a gorgeous start to the day. Our sunrise will be at 634, so we'll keep an eye on our east facing cameras. You see that layer right there, mid level clouds. That's all uh, in related to related rather to subtropical moisture coming up from Mexico. So we're watching that as well on our east uh, cameras. Now, 68 degrees. If you are downtown San Diego under the overcast skies, 61 in Poway, 61 in Escondido right now, 65 Palomar, 74 in Borrego Springs. Now that's where things are dry. We've been down into the single digits each afternoon for the mountains and the deserts. So repeated dryness going on increases our fire danger. Our wind speeds are going to pick up by about two, three o'clock. Overall onshore flow still upon us. That's a big reason why our temperatures are staying below average. And I want to show you our satellite imagery because you see a little bit of green, some speckles just to the east of us. So this mainly would be through the deserts as you see this line coming up from Baja. Overall, that's not going to change anything for us. All it's really going to do is, uh, you know, just add that little bit of cloud coverage that we might see. Once the marine layer burns off, you might get some mid-level clouds. That's kind of it. 10-day temperature trend right here does show we're going to get to back to normal on Monday. So that's near seasonal. Then we jump way up above normal for Wednesday. That'll be our hottest day. And then a check of 
live traffic here. Do you want to get you caught up on what's happening outside before you hit the roads? Here's a, just a heads up of something we just saw. So this is right on the 163. This is near Balboa Park. It came in as a hit and run, uh, but it does look like now two vehicles were on the side of the road that had crashed and this is slowing you down by a lot. Six miles per hour if you're on the 163 coming out of the Hillcrest area near Balboa Park. If you're headed southbound towards downtown, uh, a little bit of a hiccup right there. And then the right hand shoulder is blocked right now on the five northbound at Industrial Boulevard. Again, that's the northbound side where it's still in the green, so it's not slowing people down. And then we're going to take you way up north. Oh, it just got cleared. So all is good in the Oceanside area. There was a little bit of a slowdown right there on the 76, but it looks like things are fine. Stella.